This video is brought to you by Logitech. No matter how creative you are, clunky tools can kill your flow. What if there was a console built just for creators that puts everything you need at your fingertips? Whether I'm editing a video, retouching photos, or designing something, I always lose momentum switching between tools or trying to remember shortcuts. Sometimes they're hidden tools buried inside the menus or keyboard shortcut overload that slows me down for repetitive tasks. This is the Logitech MX Creative Console keypad and dial pad. This console is designed to eliminate friction in your workflow so you can stay in the zone. This video is in collaboration with Logitech, who is an Adobe Affinity partner, so this works perfectly with most of your Creative Cloud tools. Okay, let's unbox the MX Creative Console. It's pretty cool. So inside we've got two different things. We got the MX dial pad and the keypad. There is our keypad. It's not on right now, but we will turn it on. And the way you do that is via USB-C. We're gonna plug this in. Then you have contextual shortcuts to access what you need to access. And then you have left and right here, then you can tab through the different options that you can have. Contextual per application that you're in. That's really cool. Since Logitech is a partner with Adobe, hang on to the end because I'm gonna show you how you can actually get this whole thing right here for roughly $20 if you're a Creative Cloud subscriber. Then this is the base which this will sit on. You can either have it sit on there or you can have it sit flat on your desk. There's a little port right there for the USB-C. Okay, in this side, we do have the dial pad. And the dial pad, you have scrolls right here. So you can scroll up and down your page. You could zoom in and out. Also, if you're in editing timeline, you could scrub your timeline with this. It's really cool. You got two buttons here and you got these two buttons right here as well. And also using Options Plus, you could plug and play and use pre-built profiles and then our cord for the keypad. That's everything that's in there. Now first, let's talk about the keypad. Now looking at the keypad, you'll see right here, you can actually pair this to up to three different devices. You can press this to toggle through which ones you want them to go through. And also this is powered with two AAA batteries. And to ensure that you don't use up all the battery in there, there is a switch on the back here. Red is off, green is on, letting you know when you have it turned on and off. And this connects to your computer via Bluetooth. So that is the dial pad. Now the keypad, you've got a couple of things here. You could have your keypad and it's powered and plugged in via USB-C. And when you have the pair, you can either have it flat like this, or since these light up and you wanna see what those shortcuts are, you could even just have this on this propped up here and we'll tuck in our USB-C cable right there. And now I have my two shortcuts the way I want them to, like this and like that. And then I'm actually gonna plug this into my computer and show you how this looks when it's turned on. And it's contextual. So right now I'm on Finder, but also if I switch over to Lightroom, you see my Lightroom shortcuts. You have different pages of Lightroom shortcuts. You have three pages. If I go to Figma, I get different shortcuts there as well. It's pretty cool. So let's just get into how this works in different applications. Okay, before we jump into things, I just wanted to let you know that I've propped up the keypad right here and I have the dial pad right next to it and we're gonna go through some use cases here. So looking at our screen right now, we are in Adobe Lightroom. I'm gonna show you how to use this with Adobe Lightroom. I'm just gonna go through like a couple of quick tips. I mean, you get really deep on these since there's so many different things that you can do. For looking at the keypad, you have black and white toggle, edit black and white channels, export dialog, copy and edit settings, pay settings, crop angle, previous photo, next photo, and ratings page. So, and then if I toggle over, with this button, it gives me more options there and a third page of options there. And it takes me back to my main page if I do that. So now you know what I mean when I say contextual buttons. It depends on which application you're in and what shortcuts you want. But also with Logi Options Plus, you can see right here, all four of my MX devices. I got my keyboard, I've got my mouse that I can need to update. I've got my keypad and I've got my dial pad. Now, if I go into the keypad, I can go in, I can adjust and customize the keys. And here we are in Lightroom. I could actually change this to anything else I want it to be. I could change the icon on there. I could change the color. You could also customize these options as well as adding another page. So that's the contextual buttons I have for Lightroom. I've got contextual shortcuts for Illustrator, Premiere Pro, and Figma. So these are some of the ones that we're gonna go into today. The first thing I wanna jump into is Lightroom. So let's go here to Lightroom. Before this photo got to look like this, it looked something like this. There was a lot of fog around, a lot of steam, it was cold, there were hot pots. So 
I've edited my photo like this, and all I have to do is go right here, copy edit settings, press that, go to my next photo, and then paste settings, and voila. It's got most of those settings in there that I wanted to. All I need to do is crank this down to where I want it to be. But a nice shortcut there. So I can go next photo. Actually, from here, I could copy settings since this is a different spot. And then I can go to next photo and I can paste settings. And there we go. So next photo, paste, there we go, and so on. Also, a beautiful photo like this, if I wanted to look at it as it was black and white, black and white toggle, now it's black and white, just like so. If I wanted to export, short export button to go to export my images, hit cancel. I can rate my images so I can do three stars, go to the next image, two stars, next image, five stars. See how fast that was? Just by rating my photos so that when I go back to review them later, I know which ones I need to look at. So I'd also add shortcuts for viewing. So I'm gonna add shortcuts for dynamic grid, add a shortcut here for photo grid, add a shortcut here for square grid, and you know what, I left out detail grid. Let's do that one as well. So I'm gonna go out of this, I'm good. Go back to Lightroom and bam, look at how fast that is. That was already on my screen. I could view these in dynamic grid, photo grid, square grid, compare and view. So I compare do two different photos if I wanted to. I could take this one and change it, compare it to that. So just very quick like that, you have so many options here. Let's go back to photo, bam. Now let's go to our dial pad. We go into our dial pad. Let's customize the buttons. So in Lightroom, we have undo, redo, zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out here, as well as show actions ring and contextual, which is navigate photos. So I'm gonna show you this combination of how this works. So actually, let's go back to Logi options. And I do wanna add some of the ones that I usually use in the keypad and we're going to add, let's go back to page four. We're going to add this one, saturation. We're going to go temperature. We'll go tint and this one will go vibrant. All of the color mixers that I want to use and look, they're already on there before I even exit out of this program. Okay. All I need to do is use my dial pad and my keypad. So check this out. I'm going to go saturation and then let me adjust how I want this to be, cranked up that saturation, temperature. We could go from a cool over to a warm. We'll go tint, change our tint as well. See how that's more of on the green side. We go more on the pink side. We'll do a vibrance, crank up our vibrance. See there? So you have all of these shortcuts right here available to you. Using this one right here, I could scroll up and zoom in and zoom out. This one's this button's our zoom in, zoom out. We have undo, and we have redo right here. So that is Lightroom. Let's jump over to Premiere Pro. You'll see that the buttons now turn purple to match Premiere Pro. You can also fine tune those if you want to. But we have toggle full screen, save, import, selection tool, razor tool, effects, and effects control. So actually, while we're in Premiere Pro, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to effects, and now it's automatically selected my effects menu as well as Lumetri Color. It's gone over to Lumetri Color for me. So let's take a look at the dial pad real quick. If I scroll right or left, you can see I could jog my timeline, just like so. If I do this one, I could zoom in and out of my timeline with the top one. If you ever forget what these are, you can go into Logi Options, go into here. In Premiere, we have Undo, Redo, Zoom, Contextual Jog. Here we can add an action and then show the actions ring right there. Select workspace, check this out. Oh, this is awesome. So I've got two workspaces I mostly work in is wide timeline. Let's save that here and color. So cool. Select workspace, color. Because right now, currently my workflow is I go up to the top right and I switch my workspaces up there. But instead I have it here, I could switch from color to my wide timeline. Oh, that is so cool, that is so cool. I'm gonna rename this wide timeline because that's what I call that workspace. And then this one, I'm gonna rename this to color. Now you have it listed. 
Okay. Now for some quick color grading, I could actually press this button on my dial pad, pops up that menu. I can go to here and I can adjust my temperature. See that? I could just do quick color grading with just hovering on it. Look how fast it is. I turn down my saturation, I turn up my highlights. You'll see how fast that is and you'll see the right panel moving there as well. Now let's take a look at Logi Options Plus. This is where you manage everything for your creative console. So right here, you'll see that we have the dial pad and you have the keypad. What we could do is we can go into the dial pad. So you can go in and customize the buttons. Um, you have this currently set in Lightroom for these things, but you can also go for like this default general profile. Um, when you're in anything else, this could work as system volume, vertical scroll when you're browsing the web and so on. And you can fine tune those as well. You can invert this if you'd like. But I found that if I go back here, I go to dial and roller, I can actually fine tune the speed of this to be the roll speed that I want it to. You kind of just want to mess around with that to see what's comfortable for you, as well as scrolling direction as well. Since the keypad is so contextual, I can customize here um, for all these different applications that I have, and then some, or you can add a different profile. But what I really like is I don't really want to spend all that time going through what I need, but I can go to this icon right here and go to the marketplace. And inside the marketplace here is where I found those Figma profiles. Um, I can also install other profiles as well. So let's see what else do I want to have? So I could do this here. Let's add an After Effects. Here's some After Effects profiles. Let's continue, install that profile. And now you see I have an After Effects profile preset for me to go with that application. But yeah, so there's the marketplace if you don't want to start from scratch with creating shortcuts. Now something to keep in mind about the build here is that it's made of plastic, but it, what's even cooler is that it's made of recycled plastic, low waste aluminum, and the plastic free packaging, it feels premium and it's built responsibly. So lastly, let's talk about how you get this Creative Console for roughly $20, which is kind of a steal. Like you might as well get it if you have Creative Cloud all apps, it's pretty awesome. So with this, whether you're a new subscriber or a current subscriber of the Adobe Creative Cloud All App Suite, you get three months for free. So that's roughly a savings of $180. This thing runs for about $200. So you won't have to pay for Creative Cloud for three months and use that money to put towards the MX Creative Console. And I just wanna reiterate again, it's not just for new subscribers, it's for existing subscribers as well. So go check out the link in the description of how you can purchase the Creative Console and get three months free of Adobe Creative Cloud. The MX Creative Console has been a huge step up for my creative workflow. I totally recommend checking it out. I wanna thank Logitech again for sending this out for me to review and to check out. Also, go check out some of their other stuff, their MX Keys and also their mouse the MX Master 3S, which is the mouse that everyone loves, and I, now I know why. So go check that out. Thank you again, Logitech. Um, if you're still around, I just wanna say thank you again for watching the video. If you found value in this video, please don't be shy to like and comment and share this video with those that you feel will get a value out of this. I mean, 20 bucks for this thing is pretty sweet. So go check that out. And then if you wanna follow along for more camera and tech reviews, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace.